Time has expired. I now recognize Ranking Member McCall for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, welcome, Mr. Secretary. You have a very enormous challenge, but very important one in, in front of you. Um, Secretaries Blinken and Pompeo both said that the CCP is committing genocide against the Uyghur Muslim population. Last month, this committee uh, marked up uh, a bill I introduced along with uh, Chairman Meeks condemning this genocide. You recently said that, uh, uh, were quoted saying, we have other differences on human rights, but those that should not get in the way of something that is critical as dealing with climate. And I know you can try to compartmentalize it. The problem is it's, it's, it's intertwined. Because when you look at the supply chain, you look at China, they dominate the cr critical mineral supply and solar supply chains, all coming out of the Xinjiang province, which um, we believe is using slave labor to create these renewable energy sources. So my question to you is, um, how can you assure us or ensure that, that, that this uh, quest that we're on, uh, that, that slave labor coming out of China where genocide is taking place as we speak, are never a part of the climate solution in the United States? Uh, you're absolutely correct. Uh, Ranking Member McCall, you're, uh, it is a problem. Xinjiang province not only produces some of the solar panels that we believe are being, in some cases, produced in forced labor by Uyghurs, but also um, uh, there are a significant amount of uh, uh, rare earth mineral that's used in the solar panels themselves. Uh, it is my understanding that the Biden administration is right now in the process of assessing whether or not that will be the target of sanctions. Um, I've heard some discussion about it. I'm not privy to where that decision is at this point in time. But I can tell you that uh, uh, w nothing can be traded. And I've made that very clear. President Biden's made it very clear. Climate is existential for everybody on the planet. We have to deal with it. And because China is nearly 30% of all the emissions on the planet, China's got to be part of the solution, not a bigger part of the problem. So we've had very direct conversations with the Chinese on this. They have moved somewhat in the course of the last month and a half, two months after we've engaged. For instance, they had uh, a peak date of peaking in terms of their emissions by 2030. That's where we began. And they were not willing to change it. And in addition, they were not even discussing mitigation during the course of the next 10 years. Well, we've been having some very serious conversations about the reality of the science, the 1.5 degrees, the need to hold it, and so China has now announced, President Xi announced, he's announced a number of things. Number one, that they believe this is a climate crisis now. Our joint statement was entitled U.S.-China Joint Statement on Climate Crisis. They've never done that. They now have been in the body of the text. They've agreed they have to change and do something in the 2020-2030. They've agreed that the peaking now they think may be able to take place by 2025, 24. We don't know yet. So we're, we're in an ongoing negotiation with them. And where we are at the aftermath of the, of the um, summit that we had, where President Xi made some of these announcements, um, is that we've got to go back to work. We have five more months left to get them to embrace a, something that we believe you will view, hopefully, as a legitimate, uh, you know, a legitimate uh, initiative that, that makes sense. We're not there yet. And so I think both on the, uh, you know, but, and I've made it clear, there are serious issues, we all know with China, issues from Hong Kong to Taiwan to the South China Sea to, um, to uh, uh, access to the marketplace, uh, uh, cyber and cyber theft, and China. these are big challenges. But historically, we have always proven ourselves capable of negotiating even when we have big disagreements. Ronald Reagan went to Reykjavik and negotiated with the evil empire, Gorbachev. And they came away from there repurposing over 50,000 warheads, which we both had pointed at each other. If I just say in closing, I think your success is going to be tied to China. Um, and I think uh, the more you can hold them to the same standards Mike. as the United States.
Uh, the more you can hold uh, the CCP to the same standards as the United States, I think the more successful you would be, but we're not seeing that right now. Gentlemen's time has expired. I, I just said, Mr. I now, I got a message to five minutes. Sorry. I now recognize Representative Brad.